Hey guys, in this video, we'll be seeing in depth on how to create a Solana token. I've already made some videos on how to create a Solana token, but in this video, I'm going to show you each and every step very in depth and explain to you. So it'll be very useful if you're a beginner or you just want to learn more. Let's get started. To create a Solana token, you want to go into solana.keyglowmax.com. Now, the main part of creating a Solana token is the metadata. This consists of the name, symbol, description, and image. This is a JSON, and we want to upload this JSON into the Solana blockchain. So for that, we need to open Notepad or text edit. Once you open it, copy this JSON and paste it into Notepad. Now this consists of the name, symbol, description, and image as we said. The name can be anything. It can consist spaces as well. So we can call it key, glow, max, space token and the symbol needs to be all uppercase and it should not exceed more than 10 characters so it's better to keep it within nine characters we'll call this kgmt the description is a very small description of your token and the description is kind of in a beta phase it usually doesn't display anywhere i'll just enter this as just a test token but you can enter anything and a single sentence should be fine. You do not want to insert links in here. You don't want to make it very long. You don't want to enter and bring it to the next line. Just keep it very, very simple. It's very important because if you bring it to the next line and if you add links, it might mess up your token. And the image, we need to paste an AR Weave image link. Basically what AR Weave is, is it's a decentralized storage. It's like Google Drive, Dropbox, but it's on Web3. And when it's on Web3, it means you cannot delete it. If you upload the image into Google Drive and you paste the link of your image which is on google drive here and maybe one day your account is banned or your account is deleted or you delete the file the image will not be there for this token because it refers to this link whenever it wants to fetch the token's image so it's a very good practice to upload to web3 that's why we're going to use ar weave it's very friendly with solana so for that we need to go back into the token creator we need to make sure that our wallet is connected if it's not connected you can click here and you can connect your wallet then click on select file and you can select any image file. Right here, I'll use kglogosol.png. It's recommended they use .png or a JPEG. Click on open. Now we have to wait until the name appears. After it appears, we want to click on upload. The first two were confirmation messages. It's the fee you have to pay to permanently store your data on Web3. And this is the signing message to prove that you own this account. Click on sign. And in a second, you'll get the link. This is the link of the image and it's uploaded permanently on the web since it's uploaded to web three. We can copy this link. We need to go back into notepad and we need to paste it where it says paste AR weave image link here. To be sure there are no errors, make sure that there is no space after the quotation marks and there's no space before the end quotation mark as well. Make sure of this for all the fields. Click on control S and save this file as URI dot j s o n make sure that it is a json file click on save it'll ask you if you want to use json you want to click on use json we can close notepad and we can come back into the token creator and we want to upload this json into ar weave so click on select file and select the uri.json file click on upload and approve the three transactions just as we did before We name this file as uri.json because this metadata is called the uri. It's just standard term whether it's on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, or Solana, the metadata is usually called the uri. Now we can uh, open this link in a new tab and verify that the JSON has been uploaded. So you can see that the JSON is perfectly uploaded. We can copy this link and to create a token, we need these five fields. The most important being the metadata URL. So let's paste the link here. Now we want to enter the same token name and the same symbol we just entered here. You might be asking why do we have to enter the same name and symbol we already have it in the metadata file. I'm not sure but it's required so let's just do it. I've entered it exactly. If you're not sure you can always right click here and verify if you have entered the name and symbol correctly. After that we want to enter the token supply and decimals. The token supply is the amount of tokens that will be minted. This can be 10,000, a million, a trillion. Usually meme coins and other tokens have a large token supply. This is because when people buy just, you know, 10 or $20 worth of your coin, they'll get a lot of tokens and that affects humans psychologically. That's why meme coins have a large supply, like 1 trillion. I'm going to put this as 1 billion. A billion has nine zeros and we can enter in the decimals here. The decimals is the number of digits that will be visible after 
with the decimal. So usually we want to keep this as 9. But there is an issue if you want to mint a large number of tokens. According to our token supply and decimals, this is the minimum amount that someone can own of our token. Since our token has 9 decimals, it has 9 digits after the decimal and our supply is 1 billion. Now the problem here is if you want to increase the supply to let's say maybe 1 trillion, let me just change this to a 0 and now it's 1 billion. But if I add 3 more zeros, then the supply will be 1 trillion. And if I enter 1 trillion here and the decimal has 9 as well, there's going to be an issue because this is too many characters, right? You cannot put a lot of zeros here and a lot of decimals as well because the Solana blockchain can handle just so many digits. So usually the maximum that we want to keep is 1 billion for 9 decimals. If you want a 1 trillion supply, so let's say 1, 2, 3. So now the supply is 1 trillion. You want to reduce the decimals by 3 as well. So 9, 8, 7, 6. So let's keep the decimals as 6. If the supply is 1 trillion, we will have only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 digits after the decimal right? I wanted to make this clear for beginners because they put in 1 trillion here and then they mint it. They don't check the transaction and in their wallet, there's only like 3.5 billion or 3.6 billion. So make sure that it doesn't have a lot of digits. As I said, I keep, I, I feel like I'm repeating the same thing, but this is a very, very important step guys. That's why usually the thumb rule is if you have 1 billion, then keep it as nine. And if you want to increase it by one more zero, just reduce the decimal. So let's mint one trillion with six decimals. Click on create token. You can see here it says plus one trillion. So let me show you if I put in nine decimals right here and I click on create token, it will not work. You can see it just says 3.91 billion. Solana blockchain cannot handle that many digits. So let's use six decimals and click on create token. So we're going to mint one trillion of our tokens click on confirm and the token should be minted immediately, but it takes around 20 to 30 seconds to show up on Phantom. So let's give it 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, it's been around 30 seconds and my tokens have appeared with the image we uploaded and the supply as 1 trillion. We can click on the three dots and click on view on Sol scan. Uh, before proceeding, I'll just put this into dark mode. And this is the token account. The token account is different from the SPL token address. The SPL token address is the contract address for our token. Let me explain what a token account is. If you open Phantom, you have all these coins, right? All these coins have separate token accounts. So if you have 500 billion Kiko Max tokens and someone else also has 5 billion Kiko Max tokens, you both will have different token accounts because each wallet has a different token account, right? This token account is associated to my wallet alone. But the SPL token address, the contract address is the same for everyone. If you open the SPL token address, let me open it in a new tab. You can see this is the key glow max token. This is the contract address and this is the same for everyone. It has a logo. It's just the same for everyone. But the token account is not. It's just an account that's created to hold these tokens in our wallet because our wallet can't hold it directly. I hope that made more sense. Now we want to copy this SPL token address, which is the contract address. A better way of copying it is tapping on it and then clicking on the copy icon right here. Copy to clipboard, it says copied. We can go back into the Solana token creator. We can come down here and you can see there's an option revoke, freeze and mint authority. Let's just paste our SPL token address right here for now. And I'll explain to you what the revoke, freeze and mint authority is. On Solana, whenever you create a token, you have the admin access to that token, which means you have the rights to freeze those tokens whichever wallet it's in. So if I send you 1 billion of the 1 trillion tokens, you might think that you own the 1 billion, but I can actually freeze it anytime I want. That's why we need to revoke the freeze authority. When we revoke the freeze authority, we no longer have the admin access to freeze these tokens. And this is compulsory if you want to add liquidity to Radium, because when you try to add liquidity to Radium and you have not revoked the freeze authority, it will not allow you. The reason it doesn't allow you is, uh, for example, let's say that it did allow you and you added liquidity, but you didn't revoke the freeze authority. So after you added liquidity and it's live on the exchange, you can suddenly freeze your tokens which radium has and the tokens will be unswappable so to prevent this it is mandatory that you have to revoke the freeze authority so let's revoke the freeze authority click on confirm and the freeze authority should be revoked but it's better to wait 10 to 20 seconds before proceeding to revoking the mint authority so what revoking the mint authority does it just revokes you from minting unlimited tokens after you created the token you still have access to mint even more tokens we minted 1 trillion right we can mint even more if we want there's a separate function for it so we have to revoke that so let's revoke the mint authority and click on confirm if you still don't understand 
why we have to revoke the mint authority let's say that we have one trillion tokens right now our token is trading on radium and the token has grown to almost a very high market cap let's say 10 million now you can just mint one trillion more and then sell it on the market meaning you sold just half the total supply which is definitely why we need to revoke the mint authority once the freeze and mint authority are revoked our token is fully complete and we can proceed to adding the liquidity the first step we need to do is create an open book market request so let's click on create open book market there is actually two steps if you look right here there's a create open book market and there's a create liquidity pool this create open book market is not unique to radium you can create an open book market on radium and you can do it on other uh, dexes as well it does the same thing it creates an open book market on solana this is not unique to radium as i said you can create an open book market on a different website and then you can come back into radium and add liquidity the fee for a creating an open book market is around 2.5 solana to 3.5 solana usually it's just around 2.7 but this varies from time to time and you need to have at least three solana in your wallet before you proceed to this step because even if you have less solana let's say you only have 0.5 solana in your wallet this action will perform but it will fail i don't know why that happens because usually when you don't have enough solana phantom wallet will not allow you to proceed with the transaction but in this transaction it allows you to proceed it shows the fee estimate as a very low amount and then it tells you that the transaction has failed but if you have more than three solana in your wallet it shows you the real fees which is 2.7 solana and only then will the transaction succeed and create an open book market i've already done this step in a different video so i'll just play that video i've explained it very very clearly on how to proceed with this step so watch it carefully the next step is to add liquidity. We cannot do this on this website. We have to create an open book market on Radium. Go to this website, you wanna click on base token. Your token address should already be in your clipboard, but let me just copy it. And you wanna paste it right here. And you wanna click on connect wallet first. Yes, forgot to connect the wallet. Click on phantom, click on connect. Here you wanna click, sorry, you wanna input the symbol for your token, which is KGM. The name was Key Glow Max. Make sure it's the same thing which you entered previously. Click on add user token and you can see it's been added. You just want to tap on it and it'll add right here as the base token. The code token is usually Solana. So let's just select Solana and the minimum order size and the minimum price tick size. Uh, a lot of people don't understand this. Let me just go into Radium Docs. Right here you can see it says in general tokens with a uh, very high total supply should create a market with large minimum order and a smaller tick size which means if large your supply of your tokens like if you have one trillion or something it's better you go down this scale so right now we'll just use hundred and whatever is corresponding here it's better to just copy and paste it because if you do make a mistake you have to redo this process and this process actually costs around three solana so you want to copy this i want to make sure it's corresponding to hundred okay and now you want to click on create market now you can see that you need Solana in your wallet. You need at least uh, three or four Solana in your wallet before you do this. You wanna click on confirm because if you don't have Solana, it won't show it right here, but the transaction will confirm and it'll fail right here. The transaction one will be confirmed, but transaction two will fail. But uh, since we did have enough Solana, it did pass. Your new market ID, you wanna copy this and let's just open notepad, text edit and we'll just paste our market ID right here for reference. Now we wanna go back into our website and we're gonna click on create liquidity pool. Now right here, you wanna paste what you just copied and you wanna click on confirm. Now it'll only confirm if you have revoked the freeze authority. If you did not revoke the freeze authority, you will get an error here and it will not allow you to add liquidity. So right here, you wanna add liquidity however you wish. So let me just set this however I want. I'll just add everything actually and i'll add around three solana so the price yeah it's 333 million kgm per one solana is the base starting price so uh you can set the start time if you want it says a creation fee of 0.68 sol is required for new pools so right now you want to click on initialize liquidity pool so what this will do is it'll debit the solana whichever that you input right here as well as the kgm tokens you want to click on confirm 
and your pool has been created and this is your AMM ID. You also want to store this right here, which will be pretty useful. What we can do is check out our token on Dex uh, screener. So let me just open dexscreener.com and we'll copy our token ID, sorry, token address, and we'll just paste it here. Our token is right here and already some bots are playing with our token since we added liquidity. Okay, so you have created an open book market and you've created a liquidity pool and now your token is trading. Now we want to burn the liquidity pool. The reason we want to burn the liquidity pool tokens is because if you do not burn it, then you can submit the liquidity pool tokens back to Radium and pull the full liquidity. So let's say, for example, we had 1 trillion key glow max tokens and we pulled it with 10 Solana, which is around $1,000. Let's say my token does a 10 X and now the liquidity pool has $10,000. I can submit all the liquidity pool tokens that Radium gave me and pull the full liquidity, which means I can pull all the $10,000 or 100 Solana, which is in the liquidity pool. Although I only submitted 10, now the liquidity pool has grown because my token's price has also grown. Now I can pull the full liquidity and this just causes a huge red candle, causing the price to dump to zero and the liquidity pool, which is also called a rug pool. In order to avoid this, we have to burn the the liquidity pool tokens. If we burn the liquidity pool tokens, then the investors of our token have a confidence that we will not rug pull the token. To burn the liquidity pool tokens, all we have to do is open Phantom and we will have the tokens that Radium gave us, which are the liquidity pool tokens. We need to click on that token. I don't have that token right now because I didn't add liquidity for this coin. Maybe if you added the full liquidity for 1 trillion KGMT tokens, then this token will not be there. You'll only have the liquidity pool tokens, but usually that's a very bad idea. You want to usually keep around 2 to 3% or even 5% to yourself for marketing and other purposes. So you can sell those tokens on the market, which will help grow the token, not to dump on your investors, of course. But you will have the liquidity pool tokens. You want to tap on that. Right now, I'm tapping on this key glow max token, but you want to tap on the liquidity pool tokens and click on view on SolScan. And you want to copy the token account of the liquidity pool tokens. Again, you do not want to copy the token account of your token that you just generated this is the token account for the liquidity pool tokens that Radium gave you. Now we want to go back into the Solana token creator and we want to paste it here. And if we click on sync, it'll automatically fetch the token address and the decimals. Let's click on that once again. Usually this takes around uh, five to six seconds. So it has fetched these addresses. We do not need to check anything and we want to click on max and then we can burn those tokens. The maximum supply of your liquidity pool tokens will appear here. It will not be the same as the supply of your tokens which you created. Right now it's the same for me because I entered the tokens which I created, but usually this will be some other number, right? So let me just enter in 500 for example, but you wanna select max to burn the full liquidity, click on burn tokens, give it a second and confirm this transaction. Now you can go back into SolScan of the liquidity pool token account. You want to refresh the page. This takes around 10 to 20 seconds. It did not update for me. So let me just wait around 10 seconds and refresh the page again. And it has updated. So click on the latest signature, which is the latest transaction. Here in main actions, you will see burned your liquidity pool tokens. This is the link that you need to prove that you have burned your liquidity pool tokens. Also, another cool thing is you can click on this hamburger menu, click on home here. It'll go into keyglowmax.com and there's an option called checklist. You can click right here or you can click on the top where it says checklist. Here, there's a full guide on how to launch your Solana token with the checklist. It tells you step-by-step step everything that you need to do. So let's just see what it says. It says create a logo. You can use Photoshop or Canva. Then you have to create the banner new by portal images. Then you have to create a website for your token register that domain. Then you can create a Telegram group and channel using the Delug buy bot. Then set up the Delug buy bot for the Telegram group. Then create an email account and a Twitter account. Set the Twitter description, logo, and banner. Create a new Solana wallet and fund the wallet. Then you can create the token on the Solana token creator. You have to revoke the freeze and mint authority. Then you can create an open book market. Then you should update your website with the relevant links of the contract address, which is also the SPO token address. You can add a fav icon for your website. Then you have to create Telegram filters 
for website, contract address, and Twitter links. Then set up the buy bot to display buys. And then you can create the liquidity pool for your coin. And then you can burn the liquidity pool. Also, additional steps to take are updating the deck screen or token info and links. This costs $299, I think. Then you can submit a coin gecko listing and a coin market cap listing, which are free. And you can watch a full in depth video tutorial of how to execute this checklist. In that video, I do all of these steps live. So if you want, you can check that video, guys. That is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I tried to be as in depth as possible so even beginners would understand the token creation process on Solana. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, guys. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.